you want to let us know what's going on on your studio walls at the moment? Yeah. Um, I suppose um, the thing I've been enjoying most is using um, spatula things that I can find freely in home base, um, which are plastic and super flexible um, and are brilliant for applying paint directly onto the canvas because it presses the paint into the canvas and um, but doesn't lay it on too thickly um, and I can even do what like edges what, sorry I'm interrupting but what do you do, I mean so you mix up your color on your on your palette then and, and when once you reach for the brush it's actually, now, brilliant. It, it's actually brilliant. It it's brilliant for actually mixing the colors that you need like a palette knife you know yeah. um yeah like th these are called filling knives I think for you know filling holes but they, they actually work very well as a as a uh, mixing your pigment um and um getting the color you want um and then for, for actually applying directly to the canvas um uh, I really yeah. like the way um two colors mix and I even like um, the sort of traces of the edge of the yeah, little little weirdo lines, yeah. Um, but if you want straight edges, of course you can get them, and and then of course they dry. It dries even with oil paint. It dries quite quickly. Um, well, relatively quickly um, because it's not too thick, uh, and uh, then I can even draw on top because I quite like then introducing figurative elements by drawing on top. It's freed me up because there's not, you know, having a, a large blunt instrument, you tend to, <laughs> yeah. you know, you, 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 you can't tentatively do very much. You just get on with it, you know. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's good. Well, it's I mean, good. if I observe that the fact that the way you're, you're, you're using that palette knife, laying that colour on, I mean, it looks visually, I mean, certainly through a screen like this, it could so easily be a cutout like your collage. So it's like your collage, you're collaging, but yeah. with a palette knife. Exactly. I mean, I've often been resorted to using masking tape um, to get straight edges to simulate um, uh, the, the, the collaged corner um, but um, it, it, this seems to you know reduce even the necessity for that and uh, yes it, exactly it, it, it's getting what I want even quicker yeah and yeah. I love the flatness of colour that there's I mean even yeah. when you've mixed it as you showed in that example I mean it's still it's it's such flat it, colour it, it, it looks like one colour is on top of another a bit like when you see two billboard posters and one's being pulled off. Yeah. Again, yeah. that's sort of collage isn't it? You know, uh, you see the bill poster underneath the one that's, be, you know, being pulled off. Um, one is being revealed on, underneath the other. It's got that kind of quality about it. Yeah. Which, um, no, I really like. And yet when I want to do figurative drawing on top, I can do that as well. It has this reduced depth of field. It's kind of like, um, it's a very shallow depth of field, which is quite interesting. I'm also, the other thing I really enjoyed doing, I'll show you again, is the, um, the primer I'm using, um, that gray. Yeah. Is rabbit skin glue with a bit of charcoal in it. Where have you been buying rabbit skin glue then? Yeah, um, I think I've got it in Lawrence's for ages ago. Um, and it's been in a, on the shelf for ages, thinking that I would need a, to have to research how to do it or a weird kind of double pan, not to sort of... I thought it would smell. That's what I resisted using it. And it does... Yeah. Oh, you can just, and you don't have to use a bain-marie or anything daft. You can just... You can actually just boil it up slowly, stirring vigorously, and, <laughs> um, and all the little crystals melt. Yeah, it's it sounds easy. like you're making a potion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I've always loved making potions. Um, I mean, that whole, my whole life has been making potions. If you go back to the resin days of making potions, but anyway, yeah, rabbit skin glue is great 
um, and you can mix pigment in it, you can charcoal, and it's tight when it dries, and it doesn't smell. Poor old animal, poor old rabbit, yeah. you know, but never mind. No. <laughs> I was going to say, but is it is it quite shiny? Does it dry shiny? No. Is it? Can you? You don't have a sense that you're painting on top of. So, like you know, when you use I don't know PVA or something, you get yeah, that sort of yeah, yeah, shiny. Like, and in fact, it tightens up the, the canvas quite a lot. And so, the minute you put paint on it, you notice the paint as being a very opaque medium onto something quite translucent. You know, like, I like that. You know, I feel like I want to leave bits of the canvas more. Well, I can see all the time that you're talking, my eyes are, are going up to that little pink corner of the screen. That's yeah, this is painting. Yeah. Unbelievably, you know, it's your painting, your collage. I mean, it's it's like the two, historically, the two, they work fabulously together, but it's kind of, you're melding it in a new way. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's, that's yellow and that. red. Um, that that one too is on because uh, uh, you can see where my the pink is missing, um, leaving the rabbit skin primed canvas showing underneath, which again yeah. has a slightly billboardy quality about it. And then um, that is meant to be my sort of um, bit of newsprint collage. <laughs> which and the other weird thing because yeah. that was from my COVID sketchbook. Um, but I did, you know, sort of this time last year. <clears throat> um, I think it was when, before COVID had really come to this country, and we were sort of watching on, um, rather bemused at how Italy was coping. And that's from one of the it Italian newspaper images of people being locked in before we ever even knew the term. Um, and, uh, but weirdly, since I've done that painting, it and put that pink in, it reminds me of India. Now, oh. you know, how India yeah. is now. Yeah. Um, and suddenly it looked a bit like that. So I'm going with that. I might make it a bit more Indian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that extraordinary structure, the red, it's like a hopper or something. And that, a... that hopper is um, based on some of my drawings that I've done from um, walks in our countryside where you find disused farm buildings and hoppers and drums and um, you know so I'm loving I'm loving how the how this this new meld it's, it's yeah. um, it seems confident and and I wonder how speedily you're you're doing this because it's yeah, horribly fast actually I can <laughs> you know it takes me by surprise sometimes how um, I, I I I must take time to pull back and um, uh, reflect sometimes. Otherwise you could gallop away and um, yeah, yeah, no, well, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's clearly a good thing. Cause I mean, yeah. this is, you know, I, I mean, cause I'm familiar with, with you and your work and it's, it's so Pat Thornton. Yeah. And I, I think like this abstraction like, uh, the pig as well. Because I'm still in my little studio, my little bedroom studio, but very shortly I'm going to be back outside, you know, weather, now the weather's a bit warmer and yeah. I can do some, it would translate really well to working big. Um, oh God, what if you, yeah, do something really big in the studio? <gasps> yeah, because I mean, you can get really big ones a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll, start having, I'll start having to have like mixing trays you know, <laughs> Or start using um, rollers. <laughs> and you'll need a step ladder and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Like talar, right? Pretend. Yeah. Are you working towards um, showing these anywhere? Um, I am aware of um, Edgelands Modern having um, an exhibition coming soon that I will submit. Yeah. Bits too. I've been looking around for my bits and bobs or my. I mean, it must be a delight for you, but we're using yeah, the word leftovers. leftovers. Yeah, I mean, I've been, because in my sketchbooks, I'm always doing um, these kinds of things anyway. Um, so, oh. uh, you know, in terms of the tree, I'm sure I could do yeah. things like that. Yeah, these are the, uh, this is another thing I'm kind of interested in is these 
how weird people are when they're um, journalists. When they're photographers. photographers. Yes, you know, I love the way that their hands go when when they're on the, the um, yeah. holding yeah. The camera. Yeah, these guys like they distorted. become species. They become a species all on their own, don't they? But like the wildlife that they're taking photographs of, they, they too themselves become something quite exotic. Can <laughs> you submit this? Oh. Because this was a fragment of a larger painting that I had on the floor. I'd been stepping it over it for a few months. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, because um, I'd abandoned it. And, and you've chomped it out. I was looking at it and I thought, I quite like it. Um, yeah. So, uh, I'll put that into. I did realise that when we were talking about the next theme, leftovers is such a um, it's such a good it's a good word leftovers. Um, you know, there's we think of I think of the dinner plate and you know scraping off bits of you know what's left over, what's left behind, what's left yeah. out. You know, all of that. I realised, especially with the way you work, um, you know, you make use of of all of those. Those <laughs> fragments, those discarded kind of bits that I mean, I'm just looking behind you on the other side of the wall. Your your um your bits oh, yeah, of my, 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 um, and stuff. Yeah, you know they're they're treasures, aren't they? They're vital. It's like and I love bits of words as well, especially because I'm always cutting stuff out of the newspaper even before I've read it um properly. You know um <clears throat> and um uh I love. I, I'm, I'm always collecting my these things. You know, I even like the shapes that yeah. they have. I mean, well, this you've was you know, out, but you've lost part of the. Yes, because it's all about stuff. football, isn't it? In fact, I always found the sporting pages most fruitful in <clears throat> um, the football pages that all the bits of text are completely reappropriate. Um, but because the, the, it's it's often very passionate writing about feelings and disappointment and excitement and stuff like that. And if you take away Arsenal and Spurs and you know Man United out of the context, yeah, yeah, suddenly they become feelings and expressions that we can all relate to. And uh, this was about you know the scandal of the big six. You know, uh, I think it was meant yeah. to say, it "Bother me if we didn't." if we never played the big six again or something like that um right. but you know I just like the half the half yeah. said I mean I've often been accused of not finishing my sentences when I see it's sort of something I do <laughs> I, I'm with you there <laughs> it's the unsaid stuff anyway isn't it yeah always, or the half said or the well it's funny the, as well I just I just made a little link in my head about how you know your the scrapers you're using you're not using artist palette knives you're using scrapers yes well what do scrapers do you know you, you when you like you scrape the plate or you scrape whatever it is you scrape all the leftovers off don't yeah. you and I've always liked reappropriating because if you always use um, tools and brushes and art and artist materials you then paint like an artist and I don't want to paint like <laughs> an artist I want to paint and you want to hold one of these <laughs> palettes like that yeah, yeah. You, to, <laughs> you, you can abandon all those um uh preconceived conceptions about what art is or 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 you know all that the rubbish stuff Make um, up the rules I have no the idea rules. <laughs> the rules up um I always used to hate it when going into DIY shops or whatever and they say what do you want to you what do you need it for and I used to think no I'm not going to say what I need it for because they'll <laughs> send me in the wrong direction um <laughs> or shame um, you or something yeah, exactly <laughs> oh well we, we, we don't sell that kind of thing here you know and I say yes I know you do <laughs> <laughs> you sell what I need. Um, it's just it's got to be the right shape or whatever, you know. Um, so yes, I like um, always um, uh, taking things out of their context. Yeah, maybe that's what all my work's about. Yeah.
<laughs> well, in a funny way, it makes absolute sense that, yeah, that you're you and your work's the way it is. It's, um, it makes yeah. absolute sense because the results are, are fabulous, Pat. Yeah. Well, you know, as I say, it, 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 people, it, when you, when you say to students, you know, that you don't have to do it that way, you know, you, it, it's fine. Just do it the way you want, you know. Um, and um, you don't have to, people used to hate, uh, you know, find oil paint frightening because they hadn't been taught how to use oil paint, you know. It's only paint, you know. It just has white spirit or something like that, um, rather than water, but that's the only difference. Yeah, um, yeah. You know. It's funny that it's frightening. It is funny that it, it frightens people. Yeah. Because by playing with it, you discover yourself how long it takes to dry and what happens when you put another, you know, wet paint. You, you discover it by mucking about with it, don't yeah. you? I mean, maybe that's why I avoided using the rabbit skin glue thing, because I thought that was like the way real artists use linen canvas and rabbit skin glue. And I, you know, I thought, oh, tosh with that, you know, I'll just use my own acrylic primer but I've become more conscious of a it's not cheap and b it's really bad for the water you know put, to put down the drains and everything um and uh, uh and then I must admit I, I thank Alex Johnson for he put I think he put a little video of him priming um him, his canvas with rabbit skin glue and what looked like this sort of patchy gray um translucent liquid and I asked him what it is and he said it was he put charcoal he grated he grated charcoal um you know oh. ordinary wood of charcoal into the rabbit skin glue and um and it mixed very nicely or rather rather nicely patchily which is what I another thing I really like about it that's probably a good place to kind of wrap this up for now the kind of grating of charcoal yes. into into <laughs> rabbit skin glue.